Hey guys, we're on the final day of installing the fascia on this project. So let me take you through how we put this one up. You swing around here, Jordan. We, um, I took this two by four and I U-bolted it to my scaffolding. I needed a place to mount the laser. So I just rigged that up and then I screwed my framing square to the board because this bracket that came with the laser has magnets. Then I can adjust it up and down as needed. So let's turn the laser on. It's, it's, bounce, it's gonna bounce around because we're up here, but so all we do, all right, we, we've set the depth now. And I've got that locked in place. So now, wherever I swing the laser and put this, as long as the laser beam hits the top, this is level. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. So what we do is we come along, put the laser here, run a screw. And what we've been doing is a screw at each end and one in the middle. And that holds it perfect. And then we go back later and put our two screws every 16 inches. Right. Let's talk about this corner over here. All right. Let me grab this board down here. So now we're gonna fit this piece of fascia and go back and watch the first video, I think, where we demoed this. This was all rotten right here because there was a wire coming out for a light that was mounted on the fascia and we've since moved that under here. Right. So we've solved the, the leaking problem. So this is our reveal. In other words, how far below our flashing that the fascia hangs. On this side, you'll see that it's basically level, it's even, and that's because this corner of the roof sags down as it'll do. Sure. But we wanted this to be straight, and it is. We did the same trick with the laser on this one that we, we just showed you here. Right, we'd rather have a straight fascia board that you can see from the outside than a equal reveal on right. the back side that you're not gonna see. Yeah, and then this is, this is uh, crooked. Yes. Yeah. So I need to get this angle here. It, it's not 90. So I'm gonna hold this board up where I want it. It's gonna be hard to do with two hands. With, well, I'm gonna show you, and then I think Jordan may have to put down the camera. But right. We're gonna put this where it goes and use this to find our angle. It should be pretty close. Does that make sense? Yep. And then we're gonna transfer that angle to the miter saw. Right. Should be around five degrees. We'll transfer that to there. We'll cut that, bring it back up here and inscribe it for our length. Yep. I'm making dad make the cuts and go up and down the scaffolding because he needs that cardio. Here he comes. Shh, shh. That's awesome. Tight. Wow, yeah. You got your mark, huh? Yep. Cool. And that'll give you your angle, too. Yep. Sweet. All right. Get that cardio in. <laughs> is that what you're calling it? That's what it is. <laughs> we test fit our piece of fascia. Looks great. So we're gonna glue these two corners. Do you think you need the glue? Define need. <laughs> I like it because it's gonna seal this inside corner. Yeah. And that's the reason we're doing butt joints and not a miter there because sure. the miters just never seem to look good. Miters look good on the right joints like the bed for example yeah it's a pro yeah make make sure you watch that video yeah i think it's appropriate for a inside trim but outside trim like this and you miter it, it just never seems to last it opens up after time there we go yep Nice.
Do you think it's one more in the middle? I'm just gonna put two here and pull that joint together. Okay, okay. All right, I want to go ahead and yeah, let's put the trim, let's put it all, put let's it all get up. it all done. And then we'll come back and put the screws yep. up. Yeah, those are actually pretty easy to put in from the roof. Yeah. And you're not moving the scaffold all the time. Yeah, this is a super easy process. Yeah, and I'm actually running low on screws, so I don't want to run out. Sure. I'd rather get all this up first and then come back. Because we got to get spackle and stuff for the exterior to fill these. So we got to make a store run anyway. Got to get paint. Yep. All so, right. all right, let's get them all up. Let's move this down, catch that corner. Cool. Hey gang, we got this side of the house done. It came out great. So now we're on this, this gable land. It's kind of a shallow pitched roof. So all we did here, we, we cut the metal right there and then just bent it. So we didn't have a, a little short piece and then this piece. Yeah, and the hem is continuous that way. Yep. Yep. And then we're using this to get our angle, which we already found. So let's go down and cut it. Hey, we wanted to show you something real quick. At the peak of the roof, this angle should be the same as the one at the bottom. We wanted to show you this electric, electronic Bosch angle finder that I've had for, I think longer than I've had Jordan. <laughs> so, see? Yep. So we're just gonna put it up here, measure this angle. And divide by two. So we'll call that what, like 17? We'll call it one, 167. Yep. Let's see what this is. A drip edge. All right. 166. Yeah. Once. All right. Well, 166 is easier to, to divide by. So. Yep. Cool. So we'll divide that by two. 83 degrees. 83 degrees. Our miter. Go make our miter at 83 degrees. Yep. Perfect. Cool. So this has a hole button. It does. Uh, that's for crown. It's got two really nice levels Spir right there. Spirit levels on them. Yeah. Do you know why they call them spirit levels? Because uh, the bubble looks like a floating spirit. <laughs> they actually used to use alcohol. Oh, that was my second yeah. guess. <laughs> cool. Right. 83. 83. Let's do it. So we were 166 degrees between our two roof rafters. Half of that is our miter, which is 83. There's two ways you can do this. We simply set this to 83 degrees, line this fence up there, and we can make a mark. Or the easier way is, is use the scale on our saw. So we set it to seven. 83 and seven is 90. Does yep. that make sense? Yeah, so you can scribe it or mark it, do the math, mm -hmm. either way. Yep. You wanna know something else I learned today? What's that? So that all percentages can be reversed. So 5% of 80 is also 80% of five. And it's the same value. I think I did see that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. So an example would be like 5% of 80 is... Just do 100 to make it easy. Okay. So 5% of 100 is five. And 100% of five is five. <laughs> all right let's cut this sucker and get it up there all righty guys so if you look above me you will see the eve of the house is done the fascia board is up the angle at the top is perfect the bosch tool that we use worked amazingly the angle is super tight up there we used that pvc glue earlier that you saw us use to make the joint nice and tight we make sure that no water is getting in there we're not going to have to come back to this property as long as we're on the planet mm -hmm. Um, and while we were on the scaffolding, we just went ahead and did the rest of the project. You guys can see it turned out flawlessly. There is a miter joint right in the middle. Really difficult to see. Really the only indication that you have is the purple PVC glue seeping out, but we're going to take care of that. So as far as today is concerned, we're done. Our stomachs are growling and uh, the sun is setting. So it's time for us to call it. So when we get here tomorrow, we're going to be screwing the rest of the screws in the fascia board to make sure it's nice and tight they get two one on the top one on the bottom we just got to go around the whole house shouldn't take a lot of time then we have to fill all the holes we got to sand them and then paint it there's a couple of touch-up things here and there but we'll go over that um, when we get back to the house tomorrow so we'll see you guys then
Hey gang, we're back. We're headed to the house, but we had a little bit of a roadblock. You guys can see this big long train. We gotta wait for it, so we thought it'd be cool to do an intro in front of the train. Well, that was cool. Work. Yeah, let's get to work. <laughs> hey, we made it to the job site. Right now, we're going to put all of our screws in the fascia. The manufacturer recommends every 16 inches. So what I'm going to do is my first one. I'm going to leave it a little proud. And then see that notch on the end of the tape? Yep. I'm going to hook that. Oh, wow. That screw head like that. That way, while you're on the roof, I can measure, I can do it by myself. Cool. Just like that. And I'll pull every 16 inches as far as I can go. And then I'll use our trick with our combination square. What we're doing, we're going five inches from the bottom for the top row and an inch and three quarter from the, bot from the, from the bottom for our bottom row. So let's get to it. Cool. And we're using this uh, platinum patch. Yeah. Advanced exterior filler. Yeah, just right. in case you guys were wondering, it's you guys can see that it's rated for PVC, which is what we're using, right there. Um, water soluble, so yeah, water, just, water cleanup rather. Right, and just in case it rains overnight, it's 24 hour rain ready. So this is what we're using. So yep, and the we already did the second floor. Yeah, we we knocked out the second floor. All right, so let's get this done. All right, sweet. All right. Hey guys, we got all the holes filled in the fascia. It looks great. We just haven't been able to sand it and paint it. We've been dealing with this weather. I think it'll clear up tomorrow, but in the meantime, the owners have asked us to do a few other projects around here. And one of them is this beautiful old gas lantern um, made of copper and it's hanging from this wrought iron hanger. So the problem is all the screws up, up in the top portion here pulled out and they just got a tie down strap holding it you see that yep so we're going to drill these holes deeper and use some longer tap cons and see if that will hold it but this lantern is in our way um we can't get the roto hammer not in, in these there. here we're good but i want to take this down because we're going to try to clean it see it see how dirty that is yep so let's take this thing off of here we've got a quarter inch natural gas line coming out of this um, electrical conduit they just use as a chase and then it's they have a smaller piece soldered in right here but we're just going to break it at this coupling that looks like a, a one eighth inch nipple for like when you're building lamps and a cap on the end here go cool okay it's easy enough yep hey we're shooting over here <laughs> so i got my favorite boss roto hammer with a three jaw chuck in it and this is the uh the three sixteenths bit Alrighty guys, so we got the screws inside of the brick and it's pretty sturdy. We gave it a couple shakes and it looks pretty good. It's real strong. But now yeah. we gotta clean this lantern, right? Right. We and wanna see what it looks like when it's all cleaned up. Yeah, we, we tried to tighten this one, but it just snapped off. So we think all these probably just snapped off and maybe what was giving us trouble drilling is we were alongside the old screw. Yeah. But let's go clean this strong. thing up. Yep. 
We got some some oh. dish soap and some water. Yeah, and look what we got inside here. We have some some. Oh my! Skeletonized that is, something. That is a skeleton. <laughs> it looks like one of those like horror movie yeah. moments oh, where they're yeah. like in the cave of the monster and all the bones. They don't really realize where they're at. Oh right. <laughs> And they start looking around and they see all the skeletons of the the meals. Oh, yeah. And are we next? The lizards out here act crazy. We saw a lizard base jump off the roof the other day. <laughs> he did. And he got, we thought he was dead, but he was just stunned. <laughs> Done. It'll hang. Cool. Dang. That looks awesome. Show them the one behind you. <laughs> so that's kind of like a before. After. Yeah, we didn't go crazy on it. Nope. That's like a that's like a two three minute cleanup job right there. And maybe we can make the gas line look a little nicer. Yeah, rewire it a little bit. That's better. Yeah, that's a lot better. And the flame even looks better. Mm-hmm. Close it up and see how she does. I bet no lizards would go in there with the flame on. <laughs> All right, we, we got the lantern up. And another thing we noticed was on this slat wall here, something collided with it. I don't know what. It, something took them out. Yep, these seven slats. It didn't break them. They're all right here, but we're going to put them back. They built this whole, whole frame and in nailed the slats and then inserted the frame and connected it here. But we pulled all the nails with our new DeWalt nail puller. It worked great, huh? Yep. I lost my other one. So we're set up over here with our vintage Craig aluminum pocket hole jig. Right. And we determined that where there's this algae, that's the bottom of the board, so we're just gonna keep it at the bottom. It's probably some 100-year-old cypress. <laughs> right, let's put this one up and I'm going to start from the top, right? Yeah. Because otherwise, we can't get our bit in there. Right. I want to get the screws ready. I'll put this one in place. Okay, guys, and there you have it. The slats are reconnected, and the wall is complete once again. How big of a hurricane do you think has to come through here to take those slats down with all those pocket screws? <laughs> Category four? At least. Cat four? <laughs> yep. So we, we bought these plugs, and we were going to fill in the hole and paint it, but these... These are hitting the screws, so we're just gonna leave it and let that, that weather. I think this is cypress. It'll weather to a nice darker color and yeah. you won't see those. And we're also gonna paint it. Yep. Cool. All right, next project. Yep. What's up, gang? It is a couple of days later from when you saw us last working on those lanterns down there. The weather's been super crappy. It's been raining, windy, cloudy. We've been waiting for a good day to come out here and finally sand and paint this fascia that we've installed. and. Today is not the best day, but it's as good as it's going to get. And it should be sunny the next two days, so that'll give it a really nice opportunity to bake in the sunlight. So we're not looking at any rain today. We're going to get this knocked out. We've got this skill saw with some 120 on it. And so we're just going to go ahead. we got three extension cords ran up to the roof. We're just going to go ahead and take the, the orbital sander to this filler that we've applied. And after I'm sanding it, Dad's going to be right behind me with the paint and a rag. He's just going to wipe it down paint it by hand we thought about bringing a roller up here but sometimes dad likes to go old school i think so yeah, and it's just sketchy up here with a with a roller roof and a yeah pan of paint that is true so we're gonna go ahead and sand this wipe it and paint it and get this whole second floor knocked out and then obviously you guys seen we're gonna have to hang over the roof down there but you know we want to get it done before the wind picks up anymore so let's yep. get started let's get going
we thought about putting a bend here like this, which would have made it easier to cut in, but I mean, that would be a secondary benefit of it. I mean, you don't want to do that primarily if you didn't have all this. We had plenty of overhang, so we just left it flat. And it's pretty easy to cut into that. I always pour from this side. I usually do a better job of cleaning, but that way I never get paint on the directions if I ever need that in the future. Right. You're always referring back to it to see. Drying time mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Right. All right. How many times do you think we're gonna hang over that roof? I think it needs one more coat. One more coat? Yeah. But at least we don't have to sand it. You can get up here and knock that out quick. Right, huh? easy. Yeah, and then we were down there and we were looking up here and we were talking about this jump. Hypothetically, if that, if that pool was clean and deep enough. You think you could make that? If there was a tiger chasing me and I had to jump, I think I could. You got, you got a long runway. You got a here. long runway. Yeah, you could build up a lot of speed. I think, I don't know. I, I definitely think you could make that. You'd probably land right about here. Like two or three feet down. Yeah. Man. But we're not going to test it. <laughs> Jump in that and get swallowed up by something. Yeah. Gross. So now we're headed down to the first floor, huh? Yeah, we'll do that. Got to knock it out? Yep. All right, cool. And it is only fitting that the last piece that we put up is exactly where we started, huh? That's right. We started right here at this corner. Yes, we did. Wow. Yep. So I think we're 99% complete. We're gonna we're gonna fill this in with a piece of the trim. We have some caulking to do, but we love it, huh? It came out great. Can you get a shot of that paint? And uh, we've got a seam right here, which almost goes away. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. Yeah, I can kind of see the nail holes or the screw holes, so probably second coat tomorrow. Right. Okay, gang, and that is going to be a wrap for this project. We are about 99.9% .9 completed with the entire house. All that's left is to come back tomorrow, do some touch-up paint, caulk a couple of joints, make sure everything looks as nice as we can possibly get it. And that's going to be a wrap for this series. Thanks for joining us on this adventure out here on this southern property. We had a blast being out here. It was really fun to engineer that custom fascia board to account for that wavy roof. We can see at this angle, especially how well the paint matches. Give it a couple of weeks to get a little dirty and you won't be able to tell anybody's even been here. And also let us know in the comments if you think that you can make that jump back there uh, from the roof to the pool. I think I can make it, especially if it was life or death, you know? And don't forget, we are also going to be taking care of those bees. There is a huge beehive on the other side of the house. We hinted at it a couple videos back. We still have to tackle that, but that's going to be in a completely separate video, probably, probably on its own, not in this fascia series. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the like button, hit subscribe, turn the bell on for future projects. We've got a really awesome bathroom remodel and a kitchen remodel, right? Right. Yeah, so we've got some super cool stuff coming up and we can't wait to share it with you guys. So we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one.